There's a wide variety of threats affecting coral reefs. Some are local in nature and some are global. The local threats, one of the most pervasive, is overfishing pressure. Some other local threats include coastal development and runoff from the land, also runoff from excessive fertilizer application, and in some areas, tourism impacts. The global threats are obviously more difficult to deal with as we emit more greenhouse gases and we move down the road towards increasing climate change, we're getting warming seas, we're also getting acidifying seas. As carbon dioxide levels increase in the atmosphere, the oceans become more acidic. And this results in a situation where coral growth is slowed and corals can also be weakened. Ocean acidification is really a growing problem as is the warming of the seas which results in coral bleaching. So it's important that there are actions to reduce the rate of greenhouse gas emissions, particularly CO2. But it's the combination of local action and global action that's needed because as reefs face increasing pressure from these global threats, one thing we can do is reduce the local threats, thereby giving them a better chance to recover after uh, an event like coral bleaching. Our Reefs at Risk project series began 10 years ago with a global analysis that did focus on local threats to coral reefs. Last year we began a new project called Reefs at Risk Revisited where we're doing a high resolution update of this global threat analysis, which will now include global threats. We are looking specifically at warming seas and ocean acidification out to the year 2050. It's a fairly comprehensive study in that it integrates information on human pressure on coral reefs, the climate related threats, current status and management of reefs, and policy recommendations. So it's a very useful body of information for priority setting. It's done in a geographic information system. So these spatial data sets can be used by both regional and uh, national organizations to do priority setting within uh, their countries. Economic valuation involves putting a dollar value on the goods and services provided by coral reefs. Very often, dollar values speak to policymakers and businesses in a way that other conservation arguments can't. The economic valuation helps to highlight how these groups are currently benefiting from a healthy reef ecosystem and, more starkly, what they stand to lose if a reef continues to decline. So in the case of you know, tourism, we raise awareness about the large values that are often coming into countries and also the taxes that governments um, receive because of tourists visiting the country. We also look at the contribution of reef-associated fisheries to the economy and the shoreline protection services provided by reefs. And that's a very important and very high-value service. Our country-level work on economic valuation of coral reefs began in the Eastern Caribbean, in Tobago and St. Lucia. We're just finishing a project in Belize looking at the economic value of coral reefs and mangroves, and we've now begun work in the Dominican Republic and Jamaica. I'm confident that reefs will survive long term. I think there'll be a smaller area of coral reefs a century from now than there is today. And one of the things that's very important as we pull together information on threats and on warming seas and acidifying seas is to identify areas um, with the best prospect for staying healthy in the long run and really protect those areas.